So what you just watched was a tier 98 dungeon boss and I killed it in 29 seconds and I'm using the Infinimus build that you'll find on max roll to be able to accomplish that and luckily I was able to find some more optimizations for the build and I've updated that guide. If you haven't taken a look at it I highly recommend it, I can put the build link down below but it's just the Infinimus endgame guide on max roll if you're checking it out. So why do I want to make this video? Well I've been getting a lot of questions recently and most of it relates to the item Black River and why I'm so stuck staunchly opposed to using it in the build. And let me just put this forward right at the beginning. Black River is a fine weapon. If you don't have a better weapon, absolutely use Black River. If you're lucky to drop it, go for it. I think it'll make you significantly better at clearing out density, something that I think the build is already very good at. And my major issue with the weapon is that it causes you to stall out against single tanky targets or bosses, or if you're unwilling to stall out against it, you need to prepare the boss by generating multiple corpses before you can start doing your damage. But the net payoff is that you're going to get very large ticking damage over time. But you'll notice that I don't really worry about that, and I just don't think that you have to, because we now have X-Fall's Ring. X-Fall's Ring says that whenever we do damage over time, we have a huge lucky hit chance to be able to do an explosion of damage which can crit. This thing is actually so good that I would even consider dropping Decay from my Ring just because I I don't think that you really need it, but being able to trigger large amounts of Shadow Blight critting damage is one of the hallmarks of Infinimist, and the best part about Season 2 is especially with some of the vampire powers that are out there, you can get X-Fall's Ring to do a huge amount of the heavy lifting once you successfully stagger the boss. And I also just want to put this forward up, which is that I love the fact that people have different ways of building builds. I don't really think that there's a wrong way of building a build. I think if you want to compare things against one another, you can find a best version of it, but it really comes down to the exact thing that you're looking to accomplish, the exact way that you're hoping to accomplish it, and a lot of different parameters that really can't just fall into a bucket that just says, is one better than the other. But that video footage and the fact that it's all in green, I don't have the lights on, is because I didn't even really intend on making a video. I just wanted to benchmark what my kill speed currently was on the build, because I don't typically time my kill speeds. It's just not really something that I do. I take a build, I see how it pilots, I see how it feels, I base that off of my prior experience. I will use some metrics, obviously, if you've ever seen all my data sheets that I put together. I'm a pretty metric focused person, but when it comes down to kill speed, it there's so many different factors that as long as it's not bad, it's probably good. And if it's incredibly good, it's probably very powerful. But I just never benchmarked it before, so I just wanted to record it, and what I got was 29 second kill speed. But I wanted to highlight something here, because if I was intending to make this video, if I was trying to prove a point, if I was trying to like show that my bias was the strongest option out there, you imagine I would be running the strongest version of the build that I possibly could. And I will admit, I have a boss swap on right now. I'm using Grasping Veins on Gloves as opposed to Howl from Below. I'm using Tibalt's Will for an additional damage multiplier as opposed to my pants, although my pants do have Shielding Storm on them, so I don't have that on my build and we'll get to that in a quick second. But that's just it. I wasn't looking to make a video to prove a point. I just wanted to see what my kill speed was, and now that I know how fast it is, I want to show you how bad this build is, how weak my gear is, how bad my affixes are. Oh, and the fact that I have my Paragon Born set up for my minions that I just shoehorned in my Infinimus Glyphs into, because I'm actually just getting ready to test out minion builds. That's the next builds that I'm working on are like straight minion builds, just to see how good they are in the season. Because if you don't know, I play something like 12 builds every season now, uh, just so that I can update all the different kinds of max roll, so I can have the like widest breadth and most appreciation for the diversity of the class. I really don't just like play one build. I really don't just take one character and min max him to the fullest to see what they can do because I, I I personally am not super interested in that. I'm interested in testing stuff. But let's just go over this build right now, how bad it is, and the fact that I'm still killing bosses in 29 seconds so we can get a deeper appreciation of why I evaluate the build at the tier that I do. And on top of that, why I think that using X-Files 
as opposed to using something like Black River is just a superior option. We're gonna start with my offhand. My offhand is just not a 925 item power weapon. I just haven't found a better one. The stats on it are fantastic. Lucky hit, lucky hit, intelligence cooldown reduction. It's nearly perfect. Now, it's not a super high roll in the blood soaked aspect. That's not really important. But you'll notice that it's lucky hit chance with barrier. Similarly, you'll notice I'm not using the God Slayer crown, a thing that should have procced twice during that fight, which would have given me an additional 1.6 damage multiplier. It turns out I actually just don't have enough vampire packs to be able to resort all my gear to have my vampire powers on while wearing God Slayer. But remember, Shielding Storm's on my pants, and I was wearing Tibalts during that fight. So it turns out I'm actually missing out on 18.9% of my lucky hit chance, a third of my base lucky hit chance, and basically a quarter of my total lucky hit chance. I just didn't even realize that. It was also why I was taking a bunch of damage during that fight, and I wasn't expecting to do that. You'll notice that like the X-Falls wasn't perfect, right? So like the damage is pretty good, but I am missing 3% of the base damage, which is pretty big. If you were missing 3% of your base damage, you'd definitely feel that. I'm also only sitting on 23% crit chance as a crit focus build, which is actually not even really how I would claim this build is currently structured. I think you just run crit chance on Infinimist. I don't even really think there's a crit focused version of it because you don't care about like crit additive damage because why would you? That additive damage just goes in the same bucket as all your other additive damage. You just want to proc the crit so that when Shadow Blight and X Falls goes off, you get the benefit of it. It also helps with Bone Storm a little bit. I have a whopping 23% crit chance. Uh, I don't have crit chance on my offhand. Uh, my crit chance isn't perfect on my gloves, although it's like pretty decent. I don't have crit chance on my ring. My ring also says a near min roll of damage over time and a literal min roll of damage to shadow damage affected targets. No crit damage, no vuln damage, no damage to close, which is what I would actually want. Not a max roll on lucky hit either. Although, you know, at that point you think, uh, Mac, you're kind of nitpicking here. But it like goes even further, right? So like grasping veins isn't perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's pretty close to perfect, but it isn't perfect, right? But then we look at my amulet. My amulet is 817 item power, uh, so I am just like missing out on res here. But my blighted aspect is missing out on 42% multiplicative damage. I just haven't found a perfect blighted aspect. I don't really grind until I have perfect gear. I don't think that you necessarily need to, but for the gear that I have, it's not perfect. On top of that, it has ranks to terror. And while terror has been changed so that it works now against a target, terror isn't in effect until I've actually successfully staggered the monster when we're talking about boss kill speed. So I'm missing out an additional 18% stacking shadow damage for the entirety of the fight. And it's only in effect for that last little like third of the fight when they're actually staggered. So I'm missing out on the best multiplier in your skill tree. My blighted aspect is in a perfect role. My ring has crap stats. My offhand isn't an item power 925. But it does get real bad once you go and you look at my wand and you realize uh, that it does have intelligence, which is definitely a stat that we want. It has core skill damage, because I just haven't found a better wand at item power 925. It has damage to stunned and a low roll at that, so that's not even in effect again until they're staggered. And then it has a low roll on vulnerable damage, which I would much prefer be damage to close, since we can apply close status or vulnerable 100% of the time. So it's literally just a low roll on an affix that would roll lower than the best possible roll. And then I would typically like to have all stats here as well, just because intelligence is obviously like the best multiplier that you can get since it multiplies the base damage of everything that you're doing. My boots have essence cost reduction and additional movement speed, as opposed to like intelligence and all stats, more multipliers that I could add on to the build. But I just wanted to very quickly highlight how bad the gear is because if I'm able to kill a boss, a tier 98 dungeon boss in 29 seconds, with the gear that I'm showing you right here, we can extrapolate a little bit out for the efficiency gain. Missing a 1.6 multiplier, even if I wasn't, I'm missing out on almost 20% lucky hit chance. So I'm procking this a significant amount less. But it's the Paragon Tree where things get a little bit interesting. Now I am using the glyphs that I would use on Infinimist, but I had to make some allowances here because I actually wanted to respec into my minion build because I was playing on a blood build and I didn't want to speed farm on blood. So I figured, you know what I can do? I can actually just respec into the structure of what my minion boards will look like, but just throw the infinimus glyphs on there so that I don't have to completely respec my boards again once I want to test them. So you notice I'm building into cult leader. I'll eventually put points up into this board 
but I'm hitting the minimum requirements to get the bonuses of the essence glyph here. Now, I am putting control into Flesh Eater. You just always would do this, and I'm gonna do it on my minion build as well. So that one at least makes sense. That one's kind of relatively the same power. I am hitting the minimum requirement to get the damage reduction from Territorial on the Scent of Death board. This is where I'm gonna put the Warrior Glyph later on. I am building into Wither so that I can at least get my Wither damage bonus from all of the damage over time effects from Bone Storm, from Corpse Explosion, because it's not even like I take points out of Corpse Explosion. Corpse Explosion obviously does like a decent amount of damage and it's a good lucky hit chance skill. That's why we're using it, right? That's kind of the whole conceit of the build. I just don't think putting more points into it is really relevant. And then this is where I'm putting my Darkness Glyph. None of my Glyphs are rank 21. They're all rank 15, in fact. I'm actually going to take out all of these points later when I'm actually building into a minion board, build out here, and then get up into the Hulking Monstrosity just to get the Legendary Node and maybe the Glyph. We'll kind of figure out how we're going to fit the Golem Glyph in here later. But I just wanted to show off the crit-focused version of this build, which I don't really think is an appropriate identifier of these builds. I think because you can freely add on critical strike chance onto your gear without sacrificing anything be able to get the benefits of it you just should especially if you're trying to kill bosses because x fall is clearly just the best tool for killing bosses as efficiently as possible that naturally synergizes with the base build without having to make any other allowances or special additions to it really but i just wanted to highlight its strengths so that you had a better litmus test you had a better comparison point it just a lot of people have been asking me why I'm so anti Black River, do I think that there's a better version of the build, and I just quite frankly don't. Or if I did, I would be building into it. I really don't have like an ego or a bias in this. I don't need the way that I build the build to be the correct way. I just build things the way that I think is correct. <laughs> And then I try to test them, evaluate them at that level. And as I learn, I incorporate new stuff. So those are just my thoughts on it. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. It would help me out a whole bunch. If you're going to BlizzCon, I should have started this right at the top, but I guess we'll do it at the end just for people who don't want to hear me shill for myself. I'm going to be at BlizzCon. I'm going to be featured live on the show floor. I'm going to be streaming live from the event, so you'll be able to see that. And then in addition to that, I actually get to do a meet and greet, something I've never done that before. I don't know why Blizzard thinks I'm like cool enough to involve in a meet and greet, but I'll take it. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much for the opportunity. But if you're going to be at the event and you wanted to come meet me, come swing by. We're in the planner. I'm in the schedule. That's wild. That's absolutely bananas. I did. I could never imagine starting five years ago that I'd ever be able to say that. Uh, but subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. Let me know if you're coming to BlizzCon. If you are, please come by. Swing by. I'd love to meet you. I plan on trying to just like fangirl as much as I possibly can and meet all the people who inspired me to start making content so many years ago. I got videos of me playing Hearthstone from like 2015 that I've unlisted at this point because it's bad for the algorithm. But uh I'm, I'm really excited to go and be a fan just as much as everybody else. So if you're going to be there, I'd love to meet you. But that's enough of me gushing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope that it helps. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.